Welcome to another video in our series on using Canon's free Digital Photo Professional 4 and EOS Utility 3 software. This video covers the basics of using the EOS Utility 3 with a connected, compatible camera. We'll discuss the capabilities of this utility program and show you how to navigate to the various functions. Let's have a look at the Canon EOS Utility 3. We're looking at it on a Mac, but it looks and works the same on a PC. When you plug in and turn on your camera, it should automatically launch the EOS Utility 3, or you can manually launch it like I just did. And if you don't see your camera model number at the top left, that means that your camera may be plugged in, but it's not turned on. So just turn it on, and you see the model number at the top left, and each of these items is now live, and you can go into these different sections of the utility. Downloading images is self-explanatory. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Remote shooting. You can actually fully control your camera remotely. You can get a preview of what's available in the live view and you can shoot remotely. There's actually a separate video we've created to go into this in detail, so we're going to skip it in this video. If you're interested in remote shooting, look at that other class. Finally, there are camera settings, and we'll go through some of these camera settings here in this video. The camera settings include things like updating firmware, setting copyright information, and possibly even changing the date and time on your camera to be consistent with what's on your computer. All right, looking at downloading images to your computer, when you click that option, there's an option that says start automatic download and if you click here it will automatically start downloading and if you're wondering what it will automatically start downloading which images from your card it's going to download images that are not yet downloaded but you could change this by clicking on settings so here are the different options the default is images which are not yet downloaded another option is all images another option is images whose print order settings were specified with the camera that's something that you do in playback mode on your camera and then finally any images that you've indicated as protected images which have not yet been downloaded that's another option but I leave it on the default and I'm actually gonna click cancel here because we didn't make any changes you could now click Start Automatic Download and it would. Or you can decide which specific images you'd like to download by previewing a thumbnail version, selecting the ones you like, and downloading just those images. So we'll choose this option. And here's our thumbnail version. This is everything that's on the memory card of my camera right now. And in order to indicate that you'd like to download a specific image, just click the checkbox. If you'd like to download a group of images in a row, like all of these of the plants, click on the first one, hold down your shift key on your keyboard, and click the last one. When you do that, you get this little pop-up option that says, do you want to deselect all of these, or would you like to select all of these? Just click that, and now they're all selected, and they'll be downloaded as part of the batch. The download button is down here at the lower left, and there are three dots indicating it's not going to download immediately, it's going to ask you another question. So when you click there, it's telling you where these images are going to be downloaded, what the subfolder name is going to be. You could change the destination folder at this point by clicking here. You could change the file naming structure by clicking here. Or you could just click OK and accept all of the parameters that are already pre-selected for you and those images would be downloaded. But let's click Cancel. I want to show you one other thing. Down here in Preferences, it's those same things we just saw, but this is where you would change the default. So if you always want the images to go to a different folder than inside your Pictures folder, you could browse to it here, choose that alternate location, and that would become your default. Additionally, it's by default going to create a subfolder in this folder where it will save the images, but you could turn that off. And in that way, the images would just come in and be added to your pictures collection in that folder. Alternatively, if that's on, right now it's going to create a subfolder, and this is the example. It's going to create a subfolder with the date, but you could choose camera model and date and that way you have a subfolder that looks like this. We'll go back to our original setting, click OK, back to the download, 
and just click OK. And those images will be downloaded. Now what's nice is, as they're being downloaded, you get this nice big preview of what the images will look like. Additionally, the companion application to the EOS Utility is Digital Photo Professional 4 from Canon. So it launches that application, but if you decided that you wanted to link to some other piece of software like Photoshop or Lightroom, you could do that. Just go to Preferences, and in the drop-down menu, you would choose Linked Software. Associate it with a different program, and you're good to go. It would be tied to that. But for now, we'll leave it linked to Digital Photo Professional 4. And we have a video training series on this application, actually four separate videos, teaching you how to manage your files, how to download using this utility, and how to adjust your camera raw images. Since we've got that alternate training series, I'm going to quit Digital Photo Professional 4 now, and we'll continue with our training in the EOS utility. Now we're back in the window where we were with the items selected that we chose earlier, and for now, if we want to go back to the main window, just click Main Window. Now that we're back at the main window, let's look at camera settings. We're not going to go through all of these, but I want to touch on quickly, if you do download a firmware update from the Canon official website, you can use the firmware update option and follow the self-explanatory instructions, locate the file and install it in your camera you can change or update the date and time zone. Now you probably did that when you first set up your camera, but if you're in a different time zone or if your camera's clock or date are off slightly, you can just click here. You can enter them manually or you can just choose the option to use your computer's calendar and clock, automatically program that in, and it's that simple. As you're shooting, your camera has the ability to make adjustments based on known optical anomalies in various lenses. And if you find that the lens that you'd like to adjust for is not included in your software of your camera or in the menus of your camera, this is where you would go to change that or add additional lens options. You'd click here and it launches a separate application that looks like this. From here you can find the other types of lenses that you'd like to add click OK, and your camera will be updated. Back to the EOS Utility, in Camera Settings, you can register picture style files if you've created one that you like. You can adjust the owner's name, author, and copyright. Again, these are things that you could do from your camera's menu, but it's very simple to do it right here on the computer and make adjustments here. You can register background music for slideshows, and there's access to web service settings. Going back to that main screen in EOS Utility, just click Return, takes you there. One last thing that I'd like to show you is down here in Preferences. Most of these preferences we've already seen at one point or another through this tutorial. But I'd like to show you that when you launch the EOS Utility, you can go to the screen that we have been looking at, or if the thing you use EOS Utility for the most is remote shooting, or select and download, you can have the application start in one of these screens instead. I'm choosing the main window because I like my application to start there. Beyond these basic settings, there's the option to change the destination folder, file name, and so on, and we've talked about most of these other things in other parts of this training video. The only one we didn't talk about is remote shooting, and that will cover in the remote shooting video. So that's it for the EOS Utility 3 quick overview. Have a look at our special video on remote shooting or one of our videos on the Digital Photo Professional 4 software.